He's called Dr Ben Makin and he's from Helston. But this week he's gone a little bit spooky. Well, you know, it was Halloween at the weekend. Here's his upload. Source. Hi, this is Tony Todd. How are you? This is Kane Honor. <laughs> you know, I'm going to cast a spell right now. Yes, very happy Halloween to you. I am just here with a quick Halloween update for you, actually. Just a few horror movie stars. Um, First of all, first of all, and this kind of got to, you've got to include this man if you're going to do a little horror movie special, haven't you? This is Jason Voorhees himself, the fantastic Kane Hodder. Uh, If you're not sure who that is, just, just think of this sound. You know who he is now, surely, don't you? You do, you do. Jason Voorhees, so he's been in the, the Friday the 13th franchise. All of them, basically. Absolutely fantastic guy. Kane is awesome. Really pleased that we um, had him on the show, actually. Uh, also, he's been in Hatchet recently as Victor Crowley. Daddy. If you haven't seen that, you probably think I've just gone completely crackers. But no, promise you I haven't, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, uh, we've also got Tony Todd, the one and only Candyman. And Tony's got himself quite the following. He's in a few different franchises. Uh, Transformers as well. Uh, very well known for his uh, work in horror films. Uh, also his breakout role originally in Platoon back in 1986, which is a, an absolute classic film. It's amazing. He does talk a bit about that role actually in this interview. Uh, so do listen out for that. Uh, exciting news as well. So uh, of course I was talking about his uh, role as Candyman. Well he's actually going to be um, playing Candyman again in the 2021 sequel also called Candyman. It's going to be scary. Uh, Also, final guest. So, just the uh, third horror movie star for this quick Halloween update from me. Um, That's Ray Santiago. Ray shot to fame in um, Meet the Fockers. And he's included in this list because he was in Ash vs. Evil Dead uh, between 2015 and 2018. So, let's get started. Please give a round of applause to our fantastic first guest, Kane Hodder, a.k.a. Jason Voorhees. Kane, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Thanks very much for this. Been looking forward to chatting to you, sir. Where were you yesterday, Ben? Oh no, I'm I'm sorry. It was it was a bit you know a bit busy, so I couldn't couldn't <laughs> pop down. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. I, mean, I just want to say it's absolutely fantastic to have a you know a, literally a horror icon such as yourself on the show with us today, uh, and I know our listeners are going to be really excited about this. And I'm going to start with my favourite question for you today, Kane, if that's all right, because this is going to be tough for you, Uh-oh. I think, because there's a lot of the you've got a, a lot of these to choose from. But can you choose your top kill scene? Is that a thing? I'm sorry, I know it's a morbid question, but it's something that I know everyone wants to hear. Do you have a favourite kill scene at all? I know there's a lot. Of course, of course, yes. No, I mean, I have several favourites, but the first one that comes to mind is the sleeping bag from Part 7. Oh, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because I'm killing someone with something that is not a weapon. Easy to kill with a weapon. Not so easy to kill with something that's not a weapon. So. Exactly. And with, with a kind of a sleeping device of all things as well. So it kind of just shows <laughs> right. the pure power of the, of the character, doesn't it? Jason doesn't that's mess with that. Right. <laughs> right. And uh, then I would have to say also uh, the punching the guy's head off his body yep. in Jason Takes Manhattan. And the frozen head in Jason X. Oh, it's, yeah. I thought I was hoping that would be in there. There's going to be. There's a one thing you've. I reckon you might have missed this one in Hatchet. There's a bunch of amazing ones. You know, my favorite actually is, is the really long chainsaw. That's amazing that bit. You know, when you all the people oh, line up wow. and you get them with the long chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that uh, one of those guys was my good buddy Rick. So we've been working together since 1982, I think. Gosh. <laughs> um, he, he played Silent John. Um, but, you know, th- those are all my favorite Jason kills. Sure. But they are all topped by my all-time favorite kill, which is from the first Hatchet movie and when I grabbed the woman by her mouth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's just brilliantly shocking, that bit, isn't it? It's, it? it's kind of a brilliant intro for the character as well, isn't it? Because you're kind of sitting there thinking, yep, yeah, this is... This is definitely back on form. This is a proper slasher. But the, you know, that's the moment the fans think, yes, he's back. Kane yeah, is back. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Yeah. Kane, please tell me you're wearing the famous I'm a horror icon t-shirt today. Please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. 
I can't wear that in public. Come on. <laughs> no, you, you should. You deserve it. You're being too modest. I think you should wear that everywhere. <laughs> oh, I mean, people would think, God, that guy's an <laughs> no, not at all. wearing an I'm a horror icon t-shirt. <laughs> but you are, though. It's fine to wear it. <laughs> is it fine or is it, you know, would people consider it tongue-in-cheek or would they be offended? I don't know. I think, no, I think people find it awesome. I honestly, you should try it. You should try it and just see what reaction you get. And then, you know, you can blame I, me if I, it goes I, wrong. Yeah, you should do it. Just to see. I mean, I, I know people are going to look at it and say, oh, my God, look <laughs> at this guy. But I think most people would understand I'm just kidding around. Kane, do you ever find you that your know. fans are a little bit nervous when they're first meeting you? Because obviously your characters on screen are pretty threatening. Do you ever find that fans are a little bit kind of, I don't know, apprehensive? I mean, obviously, you're a lovely guy, so that, that kind of, you know, probably, um, probably helps, but I can imagine people being a bit so. like... Oh, I mean, once in a while. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, once in a while, somebody will be a little apprehensive, thinking I might not be very friendly or something, and, uh, and if I get that vibe from them, then I absolutely am not friendly. <laughs> Perfect. Just, you just kind of run after uh, <laughs> Just to mess with them a little bit. <laughs> make it all fine and everybody's happy <laughs> brilliant i'll just ask you a final question then kane if, if that's okay I, i'd really like just to well basically just ask about upcoming projects i mean i'm sure there's a there's a bunch uh, don't know if there's anything that you can talk about at this stage uh, anything that you kind of you know allowed to talk about that'd be that'd be awesome if you got anything like that in, in the works that people can hear about at this stage um of course there are a couple things that i cannot yeah sure discuss sure. at this time but you know you already know that I did the motion capture for Jason in the video game. The video game, yeah, uh, that's so awesome. Yeah, not many, not many killers and, can say they've got their own video game like that. That's, that's awesome. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I did. I don't know if you know who the Impractical Jokers are. They have a TV show, and uh, they did a film this summer. I did that with them. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun and. Uh, there's a couple things that I'll be talking about soon that are really exciting, but at this point, can't say. Well, we'll, we'll stay tuned anyway, Kane. Thanks for your time, and congratulations as well on your uh, on your on your biography. It's, it's going really well. It's actually got. I don't know if you know. You you, you might might have checked, but it's got a hundred percent rating on Amazon, so it's clearly selling like a like a dream. It's doing really well. So well done for Is that. Is that right? Yeah, it's wow, right. Hundred percent. I didn't know that. Yeah, check it wow. out. Yeah, it's, doing, it's going down well, Kane. Okay, so, yeah, I congrats. hope people do watch it because it's uh, you know a lot of people identify with some of the stuff I talk about. Yeah, sure. So. Well, thanks, Ken. Yeah, I mean, thanks very much indeed for chatting to us on, on Source. It's been an absolute pleasure having you, having you with us. I appreciate it. Thanks. Fantastic, Kane Hodder, ladies and gents. Thanks so much again, Kane. Pleasure having you on the show. Right, moving on to our next very special guest. It's the fantastic Tony Todd, a.k.a. The Candyman. Hey, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm very well, thanks, sir. How are you doing? Well, it's absolutely great good. to have you here. You all right? <laughs> I'm good. Tony, I was really hoping, could we take, very, very quickly, because we're going to, obviously, we're going to have to delve straight into horror, but I'd, lo- I'd love to take a real quick trip down memory lane, if that's okay with you, because, you know, what I watched on uh, on Netflix, it's available on Netflix at the moment, and it's a fantastic film. I watched it for the first time the other day, actually, can you believe, and that's Platoon. It's absolutely incredible. I, I just really wanted to know what it was like. It seems like it was a really stressful environment to actually be in, because it seems really real, all the tension. Uh, yes, it was. I mean, that was my very first film. We shot it in the Philippines. We spent four months in the jungle. Uh, went through four weeks of mock boot camp, which is a real deal. Uh, we literally didn't change our clothes, our army uniforms, yes. only once during the four weeks. Yes. Um, the third weekend, we did a 25-click hike during the water line. We saw dead caribou, didn't think anything of it because we were trained soldiers by then. Ate our MIIs, meals ready to eat. We turned back to base, and everybody started itching all of a sudden. Finally, the drill sergeant said, everybody okay, time to strip down. And we were so happy to just get rid of these nasty mud coats clothes, but we were all covered with leeches. And so I've never seen anybody covered with leeches to be happier to uh, peel off the clothes <laughs> in the middle of a jungle. Gosh, must have been a stressful time, Tony. And then, of course... It, you know, it was, but it was a glorious time because it was our first film not just for me, but for most people. Sure. Like Johnny Depp, it was his second project. Uh, everybody was in it. Everybody that was in it went on to a career of some kind or another uh, because it won four Academy Awards. 
Fantastic. Yeah, well, what, best picture. Yeah, what a brilliant, what a brilliant first film for yourself as well. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, it was great. I've, I've never, I've been working nonstop ever since. It's been thirty years. Fantastic. I mean, you've had a really varied yeah. career. I think the really cool thing about your career is it just seems like it's so varied. I mean, you know, of course, you've done uh, TV and film, and everyone's filming with that work. But theatre and even video mm-hmm. games as well with Call of Duty. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm a gamer myself, so when I got the Call of Duty gig, I said yes. And uh, the hardest part about that was I recorded it eight months before it came out, and I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. See, I'm a man of contracts. I believe in contracts. Yes. Contracts are important, okay? Once you sign it and you put out the dictates of the contract, you're supposed to stick to it. So uh, people that do that, I respect. When people don't do it, they lose me. Um, so, you know... We, I couldn't speak about the project for nine, yes. eight months before it came out. And, you know, that included my family and my close friends. <laughs> so when it finally was released, I just grabbed the copy myself and started playing right away. Yes. Shooting everything in sight. Yes, bam, exactly. bam, bam, bam. <laughs> shooting up again. Bam. Once in the head. Bam. You've got to love a good shoot, haven't you? Fantastic. <laughs> you got to have a sense of humor in this business because there's snakes everywhere. Yes. No, I can imagine. Tony, moving into horror. Um, is it true? Because I... I <laughs> This is the question on everyone's lips. Is it true that you actually got stung, what was it, 23 times in the, in the famous candy scene? I got stung 26 times oh, by God. these angry bees that was trapped in a trailer that was just for them. They got upset, you know. <laughs> I didn't pay them their all-in money or whatever in time, and I had to do an exchange for them, and they got upset. The next thing you know, they're stinging me. So, yes, but it was creative. It was fun things, you know. You, you, when you're on a movie set, you're working on adrenaline. Yes, and yes. you're working on creativity and the shared camaraderie, you know. And I wish sometimes that would extend to the other uh, avenues of the business, such as cons and, you know. But we do these cons so we can meet fans who are ravenous about our work, and they bring up stuff that we may have forgotten to your table. Yes. And, and that makes it worthwhile. Uh, for the fans. Fantastic. I'm sure you've got tons of your fans really excited about you. Well, your role at Zoom. You, you know, you're, not only are you a horror horror guy, but now also super villain guy. That's pretty cool. You know, it's all part of pop culture, um, and I appreciate that. And uh, can we can we point the listeners yeah. a bit more uh, information, Tony? Have you got any, anything like that to hand? Any kind of further information? Yeah, we sort? got. I got like five films in the can. Uh, one that I really love is called The Immortal, which is about. Uh, poses the proposition that if, what if one person in a relationship can never die and uh, my segment is the wonderful Robin Bartlett and uh, I'm very proud of that we also have uh, two animated series dropping we play uh, another DC villain which is great we got the episode of Flash coming up which I just recorded and uh, got, uh, two pilots one called Leap of Faith where I play an avenging angel don't ever mess with an avenging angel <laughs> because they will find a way to haunt you yeah. forever and if they don't haunt you they know somebody that can haunt you yeah. okay don't 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 do it and then the second one is a horror reality project where we travel from city to city and try to undercover strange and phenomenal horror events and then i act sort of as a horror psychologist and talk people down and give them to find some sort of closure so those are the things to look forward to in 2019 can you believe we've all lasted this long with no global warming I know. unbelievable <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. It's a chilly day here in London. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, but I've had worse pies. <laughs> well, Mr. Tony worst Todd, it's been a pleasure <laughs> having you. I can, tell, I can tell you that. You know what? You were fantastic as Reverend Zombie in Hatchet as well. Absolutely loved that. Reverend Zombie, the man who practices voodoo. See, people forget <laughs> these things. I'm a type of actor. I go deep. So I know a little bit of voodoo if I have to use it. Tony Todd, ladies and gents, what an absolute legend. Moving on to our final very special guest for this quick Halloween spook fest. It's Ray Santiago, known for Meet the Fockers and, of course, for Ash vs. Evil Dead, which makes him another horror movie star in this little spooky, spooky little special. <laughs> ah! Woo! Okay, let's get on with it. Ray, so what, what was it like? I mean, going from Meet the Fockers to Ash vs. Evil Dead, I mean... How on earth did that happen? That's, that's kind of two quite varied things there, isn't it? That's awesome. Yeah, you know, it's really... What's interesting is that, like, I started acting when I was 12, and, uh, you know, I'd done my first film before I graduated high school, and I was fortunate enough to lock into two franchises. They were 10 years apart, right? Um, and in that time, what did I do? I, I, I moved to Los Angeles when I was 19 to shoot Meet the Fockers, and... 
I was instantly recognizable. Um, I was the thing from that movie that people remembered the most. Yeah. Um, and I would walk down the street, and, and even till this day, I feel like the one that I get recognized from the most is Meet the Fockers. I um, moved to Los Angeles and jumped from television series to television series, did a bunch of different like independent films, a couple other studio films, but really it wasn't like, I did Fockers and then instantly became famous. I was recognizable, but um, I still had to sort of like prove myself to the industry, sure. prove it to myself that I had what it takes. And it took 10 years, but thank God that that movie was the gift that kept giving. Because, yeah, you know, you, you, you have that great cast, right? You've got Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, Ben Stiller, uh, Blythe Danner, and Bob Streisand. Yes. Oh, and by the way, and Dustin Hoffman. Yes, yes, that? Yes. I don't know. So it was like so many people. So so many people watched. And so the residual income on that movie was like the best thing ever. Uh, it paid for my 20s. Yes. I lived off of it for my entire 20s. Um, and so I was able to, you know, sort of grow up as a man in, in Los Angeles. I'm originally from New York City, South Bronx, Puerto Rican. Moved to Los Angeles, became an adult. Um, I, and I was pretty responsible. I'm, I'm glad that it didn't, it didn't like, I didn't have this like instant stardom because I don't think that I would have, yeah, I would have sure, uh, sure. done as well as I, as I have, you know? Um, and I was struggling to find a, a part that really could sort of define me as I approached my thirties and then Ash rolled around and I've got a very distinctive look, you know, I've, yeah. I, I don't know if you know, but I've basically got like three mustaches on my face <laughs> and my my eyebrows look like mammals um so amazing, and my hair man. at the time <laughs> i was getting cast as like you know drug dealers and gangbangers and sort of falling into like what the stereotypical roles are for latinos and so i uh decided to like grow my hair out and and uh and and the look that i presented when i went in for ash was this very sort of cartoonish look that then became uh, the template for the character. And um, and then when I booked Ash, um, my life changed exponentially. Exactly. It went from being, oh, you're the guy from Meet the Fockers, to, oh, are you Ray Santiago? Yeah, And it yeah. was one of those things where, like, oh, I was like, oh, some people actually, like, know my name. Um, you can also cut me off, by the way. I tend to ramble. <laughs> no, um, don't be silly. No, we want as much of, as you as we can possibly get. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, unless you got someone else out there, but um, I'm happy to talk. Like, you've asked some good questions. Actually, you haven't asked that much. I've just been talking. Well, that's the best um, one, but, <laughs> but no, you know, to be handpicked for this role by Sam Raimi, the creator of what I like to call the cult classic comedic genre um, to, to sort of move forward and, 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 and keep the franchise alive, sure. uh, to be chosen by him and to be trusted by him and have him take me into a room and say, hey, listen, I trust in you that you can do this. Um, and then go and shoot this show in New Zealand uh, for three years was... Um, was life changing, and so I, you know, your your question was, you know, what was it like being in in these two big projects? And they've been life defining, and they've changed my life. But they've also kept me. It's kept me humble to have to keep working. You know, because yeah. the thing with this industry is like you get a job, and then it's it, you, you always have to sort of start from square one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. When the job ends, you go back to you know doing something new, um, and and having to prove yourself constantly. But. Uh, I've been able to uh, gain an incredible fan base that has been super loyal to the franchise, and we didn't know if they would accept us and they would like the new characters, and they did. So I'm I'm very thankful for that. Um, I'm 34 now, so if if history is going to be as it has been, um, looks like I probably won't work again till I'm 40, <laughs> and um, that job will change my life from 40 to 50. It sounds to me, I don't know if you agree, but almost like Meet the Fockers was this fantastic ticket to carry on doing what you do, uh, you know, what you love doing, you know, carry on acting and, and keep keep going, basically. And then you land this absolutely fantastic new role. And now you've got an incredible fan base. So congratulations to you, sir. All good things to come. It was the ticket out of the Bronx and into Hollywood. And I promise you this, whatever I do from now on, it will not be boring. That's yes. David Bowie quote, by the way. I've got a movie that's <laughs> coming out about uh, what happened 
the night that David Bowie died and how it changed uh, the world forever. Fantastic. So look out for that. It's called Speed of Light. And I also have another television show called The Body that's on Hulu, produced by Blumhouse. Oh, brilliant. Well, thanks so much, Ray. been absolutely wicked chatting to you today. I'd best let you go then, I suppose. You, you know, we can't keep you forever, can we? I'd love to, but best let you go, I suppose. <laughs> good night and good luck. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ray. See ya. That was fascinating, wasn't it? Ben Makin. <laughs> And his upload of interviews with actors from horror films from his show on Source FM, The Candyman. I just, <laughs> oh, I just, I just can't think about it. looking in the. No, I can't look in the mirror anymore. Just when I thought I'd got over Halloween, I'm spooked to be out of it.